Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the different creep models that are available in Abacus. There are a lot of them, but which one should you use? Um, so when you use a linear elastic material model in Abacus or an elastic plastic material model, you can combine those with the creep law to make the material model strain rate dependent and time dependent. There are a lot of different creep laws you can use. Some of them are shown here, time law, time power law, etc. Some of these you actually shouldn't use, and they even say that in the Abacus manual. So today I'm going to talk about which of these are useful and which of them you should avoid, and also demonstrate a little bit how they can be applied for finite element predictions of polymers. Note that in the latest version of M calibration, we support all of the models that are written here on the screen, and, and I will demonstrate that today in a uh, video. So. Let's talk first about time-based creep models or creep laws. There are two of them available in Abacus, and they are very similar. Uh, the first one is just called time model. That one is called time power. And you see that the creep strain rate here is either a constant times Q, which is the Mises stress in this case, raised to a power, times time raised to another power. Um, the newer version of it is the same, so functionally they're identical, but there is a big difference here. In the second one, you take Q, the stress, and divide it by, by a parameter called Q0. And this is hugely better because what if Q, the stress, is um, in uh, SI units, say, say 100 10 to the 6, 100 megapascal, that is, raised to a power of 5 or something, so 100 10 to the 6 raised to the 5th power becomes a very large number. So in order to make this work, you would have to have a tiny, super small A number that's very close to zero, causing issues with rounding point and numbers, etc. So um, when it comes to using this, you should not use the time model. You should always use the time power model because of that issue. It's normalized. The units are correct. It's just a better formulation. How about strain-based models? In Abacus, there is a strain model and a power model, they are called them. They are functionally identical too. I wrote them a little different than what you see in the Abacus manual here to demonstrate that there is a prefactor, it's just a constant, and then stress raised to another constant, N and M are parameters you need to specify, and then you have EC, which is the current creep strain, raised to some other uh, constant. This is a problem because stress, again, can have arbitrary units, you raise that to another power, not so good. You get rounding point issues. The power model overcame that issue. So when Abacus formulated this, it refined it to say Q divided by a, another value that you specify to make it dimensionless. And you also reduce the magnitudes, which then makes it much easier to use. So of these two, don't use the strain model. Use the power model for that purpose. Um, there are three other models that I want to talk about here. These are temperature-dependent models, the hyperbolic model, the double model, and the Dervaux model. Um, you see that uh, the first one here is just a sine h function. Q is really the number to look for. That's the stress. Uh, but you see this is an old-school model again. B is the parameter as u is 1 over stress, and this becomes kind of funky. Uh, why didn't they divide it by Q0 is a good question. Um, but here it is, you can use this, and then you have this energy activation term that makes it temperature dependent if you're interested in this. I should point out that the temperature dependent creep models that are available are mainly for solder type metals, not for polymers. But you have a metal that undergoes creep, these are the models that people often use because you have time dependence, you have temperature dependence, strain dependence, stress dependence, you get all these effects at once. The double uh, type model here, there are two terms that are almost identical, but you can have two factors to control the creep response in it. And the last one is a both steady state and uh, uh, long-term creep model that is formulated like is shown in the equation here. I don't want to go into the details of that particular model just here. What I want to talk about instead is in M calibration, you can use these models to explore and see what how they behave like. So here's a setup that I have where I have um, uh, M material model, an abacus creep model. In this case, it's creep model number seven. So it's the power model. It's the modern version where the creep rate depends on the stress and the strain value. And I set up some load cases here that we can explore. I'm going to start by looking at a uniaxial tension virtual test. So virtual sim experiment, I load it to 20% strain, and then I unload it. So if I run this once, 
you will see that this is the strain versus time response. Not so interesting. I'm going to plot true stress, true strain. So the prediction from a linear elastic with creep model will look like this, similar to what you see for certain polymers that rolls over and then unloads like this. Looks almost viscoelastic in some way. Um, so that's really interesting, of course. Here of the parameters, E is the modulus here initially, uh, nu is the Poisson's ratio, Q0 is the stress in the creep law, and M, N is the power exponent, M is the strain dependence, which is set to be zero here. So that's why we get this kind of response here. Um, what we can do with this one, though, we can play around with it a little bit to explore how these parameters influence the results. So I'm going to do that by doing a parametric study and M calibration. I just click on parametric study, and then I explore this here. So this is the influence of the Young's modulus changes the initial slope and the unloading slope, as we can see. Q0 is kind of like the yield stress or the, the resistance to creep response. So that scales it this way, as one would expect. The M parameter controls um, the rate effect as well. So that's how that goes. To in, in study the influence of the M parameter, we need to activate it as an optimized parameter. Otherwise, we can't get to it. So I'm going to turn it on, go back here. I'm going to make these M parameters, which have to be larger than minus 1 and less than 0. So I'm going to do minus 0 0.3. I'm going to do minus 0 0.2. And I'm going to make it uh, 0, perhaps. So evaluate this one. And I'm going to click on M. And we'll see that the M parameters changes the slope after the onset of creep here. It makes the creep resistance a strain dependence, and that's the purpose of that. But it does it in an interesting way, as you can see here. So that's the influence of those parameters. Let's look at the creep response from this type of model. I'm turning on my two creep load cases here, and uh, turn this off again. Uh, what are these load cases? They are simply a creep uh, with uh, uh, invented experimental data, the creep stress is one, and I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with this model. So I run this once, you can see that the creep here are two tests, a stress versus strain, but we can plot this in a different way, perhaps be more interesting. I'm going to plot on the x-axis to the left, time and the y-axis engineering strain, and uh, here is that on, on the Figure to the right, they're going to do time on the x-axis, on the y-axis, engineering strain. But I want the x-axis to be logarithmic, so I'm going to switch that over like this. So here we can see that if m is equal to 0, the creep strain is linearly increasing with time. Uh, of course, that's just the equation for a given constant uh, value of strain. In this case, the strain doesn't matter because m is 0 we get this response. But if we plot strain, creep strain, it's a function of a logarithmic time, we see this very interesting effect, but it really accelerates at large strains. This is sometimes happening in polymers, but not always. And this is certainly a concern uh, due to this simple uh, response of it. What you can do is with the M parameter here, if you select it to be like a little bit negative, and you run this again, we will see that it, it actually changes the slope here. It makes it flow a little faster initially and then it slows down so you can you can tweak the creep response a bit with the m parameter in this model it drags this down less accelerating at larger strains we have in essence a strain dependent creep model so that's pretty simple this is a model that i actually like uh, of these different creep models that are available the strain dependent power model another model that people often use which is really a bit unfortunate, and it's because it's difficult to use, is creep model number eight here. And this is the time power model. So this is the model where the creep rate depends on the stress, but also on time. So basically saying the rate of creep depends on the time itself. And this can be a problem. So if I just do a tension test here, it's a virtual test that just goes like this. And uh, that's fine and all. But let's look at the parameters. Young's modulus, uh, this is the flow resistance. N is the stress exponent. And M is now the power exponent for time. So creep rate is proportional to time raised to the power of minus 0 0.3. And it has to be between minus 1 and 0. 
But the trick here, which you really need to remember, is that if you do a different experiment, and a simulation here, a virtual experiment where I keep the strain zero for 1,000 seconds, and then I deform it. So basically say, I'm going to keep my specimens just sitting here on the table, and then I'm going to deform it. I will get a different response than if I start deforming it right away. So a specimen that sits there under zero strain or stress actually will behave differently because time has changed. It's really goofy in some way to have a, a stress that depends on time, and it doesn't matter what strain was. So that's really what you get with this kind of model, this weird time dependence. So what people do when you try to use this one is that any load step that does not have load makes or made really, really short, and then the real creep is just where you focus your effort. But it's a little dangerous because clearly uh, you shouldn't change the response of the material when it just sits on the table under zero stress or strain. So I try to avoid this model because of this weirdness to it. So explicit time dependence in your creep model is not the best idea. The next thing I want to show you is a little bit about, can we use these for different polymers? Do they work? Is this a good idea? So I'm using here a linear elastic material model in Abacus with the, the, uh, the strain-based power model. And I have calibrated it to experimental data. In this case, it's for silicon rubber. So I experimental data, load and load cycles. This experimental data, and the best fit I can come up with is as you can see here. So the error is 25.8%. And uh, the predictions are kind of goofy. They're kind of in the, in the middle here, but you can see that they, it doesn't look like it should look when you uh, know the experimental data. So I would not recommend using this kind of linear elastic with creep model to predict this kind of larger strain response of an elastomer. How about simulating the response of a thermoplastic? So this is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Here's the experimental data that I have, tension cycles, compression cycles. And I calibrated this linear elastic creep model with strain dependence to this. What's the best this will look like? It looks like this. The error is about 14, 15%, uh, but it doesn't look good, right? It doesn't really match the data very well. It's oddness to it. So yes, you could use it for this purpose, but I wouldn't recommend it. The other models that will be more suitable for this problem. So to summarize, the different creep models that are available in Abacus, two of them you shouldn't use, the time law or strain law. It was just they're formulated in a weird way, and that there are better versions of them that have better capabilities. Uh, so use those instead. I also recommend that you try to avoid using creep models that have explicit time dependence that can cause all kinds of issues. My favorite of the of the crowd, if you don't want temp, uh, temp, temperature dependence, is the power law creep model. And these, of course, can be combined with linear elasticity or elastic plastic material models. Uh, so you can use them, but they don't always give as good results as one would hope. In most cases, I certainly recommend something else. But this is what they are behaving like. And if you have any questions about this, you can ask them below.